Hello everybody, this is Peter from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and here we are again with another tutorial on NGUI. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up our project in Unity. Now we left off last time, we'd actually set up our dual camera setup. And today we're going to go ahead and get this new label to actually start following our cube around. Because uh, if we start our game up right now, uh, we want this label to be above our cube. And if we grab our cube and actually start moving it around, uh, it does not follow. So for now, we're just going to do a nice quick little rough sketch up of a script just to get it to follow it, regardless of where that cube is. So let's go ahead and we'll open up our script for the floating text. Right there. And there's a few things I'm going to want to do. Now, I did make a note down here. I've added a few things that I wanted the script to do. I want it to float upward for X seconds, uh, then destroy itself, or at least for now destroy. Uh, later on, it's going to be put into like a pool of floating text that can be used again instead of constantly creating and destroying them. But, but for now, we'll destroy them. And I also want to follow the game object around on the screen. Now, this is what we're going to be doing today. And since I've talked about that, I'm going to go ahead and move these up here. All right. So there's a few things we're going to want to do. In order to follow it around on the screen, we're going to want to know what we're following. So I'm going to come down here. And... I'm going to make a private variable. Well, for now, I'll actually just make it public. And it's just going to be of type game object because what we're, we're going to follow around is a game object. And I'm just going to call this target. And there's two other things that we're really going to need to know here. And that's basically the camera that we're going to be using to keep track of our target and the camera we're going to be using to actually keep track of our GUI. So we'll go ahead and we'll make a couple, we'll make these public too, just to look at them in the inspector. But a couple of variables here of type camera, and I'm going to call this one world camera. And this is the one we actually keep on our target as they move around in the world. And I will make another one here, which I will call uh, GUI camera. Great. Now, to get these actual cameras, since we're going to be spawning this in as needed, we'll need some function to do it. But for now, I'm just going to keep track of it in start. And actually, let's just keep everything in late update, even though it's not very efficient. Right now, we're just trying to just get everything working. And we can come through and clean this up a little bit later on. So. Uh, we can do this in update or late update. I tend to move my character around in update, so I want to use late update. Now, the difference is update fires off and any script that has an update function to it, it'll do all of those you know, updates. And there's really not a whole lot of control. Now, Unity does have the ability to have uh, the order of your scripts that you want to go in. So you can say, I want this script to run, then that script, and then this one here. Uh, I tend not to use that. Uh, I like to script it basically where they don't depend on each other. So whatever update fires first just fires, which is fine. Uh, but late update will fire after the update, or I guess after all the updates of all the other scripts. So that's why I'm putting it here, because I want the name to follow it after the character is moved. And I did the exact same thing in our camera script that we created for the hack and slash tutorial series. So let's go ahead, we'll put it here. So I'm going to have to say world camera is equal to, and I'm going to go into the NGUI tools, because there's one included in here that's really good. And that's just to find the camera for a specific layer. Now the layer that we're going to want to find the camera for uh, will be the one that we're targeting. So we're going to have to find it for the target. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for our GUI camera. And yes, I know it's not efficient to have them in my late update, but like I said, I just want to keep it all together for now. And GUI tools dot find camera for layer. And we want to get the, the uh, camera that we're using on our GUI. So we can actually just say game object, which is the game object this script is attached to, which is our floating text. And we're just going to grab the layer. And whoops, 
now that I look at it, this is actually a typo up here. We actually need to grab the layer up here as well. So we got to grab the target and get its layer. So I just want to quickly go over to Unity and take a look at that. So if we select our cube, it's going to be looking at the layer, which is default. So it's going to look for the camera that uh, is, is specified to grab the default, which of course is this one up here. Now, to be honest, I've never tried if I had multiple cameras doing it. I've never really tried that, but if, if it is something that comes up later on, it is something I'll have to address, but I only have one camera on there. And of course, for our GUI, our floating text here, it's on the 2D, 2D GUI, and we only have one camera on that right now. So everything should be fine. So I'm just gonna shrink that back up. We'll head back into our script. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually take our game object that we want to follow around, get its position in the game world, and transform that to our position in the viewport. And it's, it's pretty easy to do. We're going to create a vector 3 for it. It's only one line of code. And I'm just going to call this POS for position. And what we're going to want to do is grab the world camera. And then we're just going to call a method that we have on it called world camera. Or sorry world uh, to viewport point right there and we want to specify what it is we're trying to uh, get the position of which is going to be our target and we'll want to get its transform and its position and once we have this we want to go ahead and actually position it properly on our GUI camera so we're going to say pos is equal to GUI camera dot, and then we're going to call the viewport uh, to world point. And we're going to pass in this position that we got. Okay, then after we've done that, uh, we're going to go ahead and set our transform, which is the transform of this game object, which is our floating text. We're going to set its position to be equal to that position we just calculated. Now this isn't gonna work exactly like we want it. If we go ahead and head into Unity, I'm actually gonna go ahead and open this up, select my floating text. I do have to assign the target manually for now, which is fine. Uh, we don't have any typos, so I'll go ahead, we'll start this up. And I'm not seeing the text here. I just wanna sure everything's assigned here, which is fine. If we go ahead and actually look at our floating text, we'll notice that the Z spot is way out there. What we actually want to do is keep this Z spot in um, the range of our viewport, or sorry, in the range of our actual camera that we're going to be using on it, uh, right here. And we have a near of negative two, so I'm just going to set it to zero. So we'll come in, and I'm going to go right above it and go, uh, I should just take the position, dot Z. And I'm just going to zero it out. And if we come back in, go ahead, we'll start this back up. And there we go. We see the new label is now stuck to it. And of course, you know, we're going to be passing other stuff into it a little bit later. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll string this down. Oh, uh, this is just going to be a different string. We'll just call them uh, evil QB. So original. But the important thing to note here is that if we actually select our cube, and move it around, it sticks to them. Now it's sticking to the center, which is not really what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and create an empty game object. And I'm gonna call it name. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to my cube. I'm gonna zero out its position. And let's actually go zoom in on the cube here. And we'll look at it straight on here. Well, I guess I could have just used a diagonal view. But anyway, what I want to do is actually move the name part up a bit. So I want the name to be above the actual game object. And it's going to be different for each game object. That's why I'm creating something for it to hone in on. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's set it up to actually look for this now. Well... We can get that a little bit later on. Let's just assign this as the target. 
just to make sure it's positioned right. And there we go. So as our cube moves around, or our player, or whatever we're going to be using, this will stick with it. Uh, let me go ahead. We'll just look at the code here. I just stop it. Yep. So we'll go ahead. We'll look at the code here. Uh, there's going to be some cleaning up, and there's going to be some checks that we have to add here. But we can actually do that when we come through at the final stage and clean everything up like we did with our vital bar. But this is pretty much everything we needed right now to get the cube to follow us. Or sorry, to get the name to our cube. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.